So given a particular capacitor or capacitance values, we know how we can deal with them in a circuit, but let's dig in a little deeper to talk about how a capacitor is built and how that specific capacitance is decided based on the geometry of your two pieces of conductor that stores a charge. The most common type of capacitor is of course the parallel plate capacitor which consists of two plates. And that's why the symbol of a capacitor is drawn in that way. What happens is as current flows in here we end up putting assuming conventional current, we end up putting a positive charge on this side which induces and pushes a positive charge away from the other plate giving the same current out. Now of course they are not the same electron but the effective amount of electron that moves it's end up the same. As we move more and more charges onto the one plate more and more charges get kicked off the other plate so whatever charge is built up on the one plate it's exactly uh, the opposite on the other plate. It's okay. not that one has charged the other has zero it's they're always equal and opposite like that. And the simplest case that we'll deal with is what we call an air gap parallel plate which more accurately speaking is a vacuum gap. We expect that there's nothing in between the two plates so the electric field simply is given by our Gauss's law. And we've done this before with two parallel plates we treat each parallel plate separately and in the middle we have E plus on the one side that's given by sigma over 2 epsilon naught because we'll draw a Gaussian surface like this and there'll be two ends to it which is Q over A times 2 epsilon naught and then E minus goes in the same way because all the fields go inwards drawing the Gaussian surface like that and so the total E would be the sum of these two which gives us simply Q over A divided by epsilon naught. Why did I get the E? Well I get the E because I want the voltage. The voltage is going to help us define the capacitance because capacitance is defined as Q over V. So whatever Q we have, we just sort of assume a Q and then we find out what the voltage is, make this division and we can find out the capacitance. And since for capacitance we're not so much concerned about the direction of such things, we can never have negative capacitance. So let's make our life simpler and just deal with the absolute value of the magnitude of the change in potential or the voltage difference and of course it's given by that integral there going from one plate to the other and we're going to lose some potential but we just want the magnitude again uh, with the uniform field of course this just becomes E times D whatever the separation distance is so that's how we arrive at C is equal to Q over V which is Q U over Q A epsilon like that times D which is the voltage. The Q always cancels out and we end up with that expression there. And it sort of makes sense that the larger the area the more charging you can hold the closer the two plates are the lower the voltage which gives you a higher capacitance yet again. A device with high capacitance is able to hold lots of charge with little voltage. So this allows us to answer the very first part of part A which is before the dielectric is inserted air gap. In this case they actually gave us the capacitance which is nice so what is the potential difference so we just have to find out V is equal to Q over C we got the Q which is 9 microcoulomb and we got the C which is 3 microfarads. Unit always works out, it's going to give us 3 volts proper. But after the dielectric is inserted, so what is this dielectric thing? Cleaning things up a bit, this dielectric thing all we're saying is we put an insulating material in between the two plates such that the insulator because an insulator doesn't allow the charge to move from one plate to the other but what it does is it has an effect we're going to induce a charge in the molecules inside this insulator. They can't move 
but they can align themselves in the same fashion as how we talked about dipoles aligning or creating dipoles outright given the electric field because any dipoles in here would like to spin themselves with the negative facing the positive like that. So the effective effect of the polarization or alignment in the insulator slash dielectric by the way an insulator is a dielectric a dielectric is an insulator just two words are basically the same thing it partially cancels out the electric field that are between the two plates and if you decrease the electric field well remember how we have the delta v is equal to e delta d if e goes down v also goes down and that effectively then makes your C go up. All the mathematics aside, effectively though, the result gets boiled down to something quite simple. Because what we've done is we've gone out and tried all kinds of material and we've measured the effects of such polarization and we've encapsulated it in this constant called a dielectric constant. And what this dielectric constant is, is Effectively, in all equations, whenever we see epsilon naught, we replace it with kappa epsilon naught, kappa being the dielectric constant for a particular material. It's very similar in a way to, say, density or the coefficient of friction. There's a big table of these things that you can look up, and you find out what that number is. In this case, it's given as kappa is equal to 5. And basically, everywhere we see epsilon naught, we replace with kappa epsilon naught. So the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with a dielectric, the only difference is we replace epsilon naught with kappa epsilon naught. Which also means that the capacitor is simply kappa of the original capacitance. So the C with the dielectric is the dielectric constant times the original capacitance, so that's 5 times mm, oops, 3 microfarads, giving you 15 microfarads. Then your V changes, the micro cancels out, and gives you 0 0.6 volts. Like I was saying, the molecules in the insulator or dielectric aligns and polarize within the electric field set up by the two plates and partially cancels out the electric field to reduce your voltage across the two plates even though the same amount of charge is on the plates. Moving on to part B, they're asking us about the electric field. So electric field of course can be given by delta V over delta D in this case of course in between parallel plates, the electric field is uniform. So for the air gap, we have the delta V of 3 volts, we have the distance of 2 millimeters, make sure to change that into meters before proceeding, and get 1500 for the case with the air gap, and for the case with the dielectric, the voltage is 5 times as small, the electric field is also five times as small. Once again demonstrating that the partial cancellation. So that's how we deal with dielectric. Every time you see epsilon naught you replace it with kappa epsilon naught and you're good to go.